Mm, I think we should start already. Mm, time is okay. Okay. I wanted to talk about uh, what has happened uh, on LibreOffice site uh, since uh, in version 7.0 in, oper in, in operability, in interoperability topic. Oh, can pronounce this word uh, even correctly. This is expected uh, to be a joint talk uh, together with Michael Stahl. Um, the part of the talk uh, I, I, I will talk uh, about what I achieved, uh, part uh, by the Michael. Initially, we were uh, planning to spend uh, more time about uh, interesting cases uh, found uh, during this work, uh, but uh, practically, especially after yesterday talk with uh, chat with Marina, I've uh, decided to put more focus about uh, how actually this is done in my case. Probably it is uh, will be of some uh, use uh, to people uh, trying to do these things uh, for people who are already doing for it for many years. It is uh, very unlikely to find something new. Okay, uh, practically we expected to talk about uh, in this case about Microsoft formats uh, and how LibreOffice is opening uh, and uh, saving them back. And we, um, uh, of most popular uh, among uh, people and organizations. And we should also uh, should not forget about uh, that old Microsoft binary formats, uh, DOC, uh, XLS, and uh, PPT are still in use, and also RTF. For example, in my country, uh, official governments are still uh, operating with uh, these old binary formats, man even many years later. And quite obvious uh, goal that uh, LibreOffice uh, should uh, do the things correctly with this format. I mean, loading and saving them back. Well, how in general uh, this is happening? When LibreOffice is uh, doing something wrong on docx uh, file, um, how this happens to be to work? At first, the uh, goal is usual to minimize and reduce the test case uh, received from from Bugzilla or uh, by any other means from customer or any other task. Because uh, usually test case is some, it can be a quite huge document, very uncomfortable to edit, especially when LibreOffice is built in debug configuration, it is uh, really painful to load the doc uh, document with many images, with many pages. It is uh, really slow and because it is made uh, many times, uh, it is um, not nice. And another topic of doing this uh, step is uh, actually to easy to locate what the root of uh, problems, where it is located. Uh, and uh, find the actual reason. Magic step and expect it to be a profit. But uh, no classical problem uh, that I was stuck in the many times uh, and uh, seen that many other people are doing the same. Uh, minimize the test case is not guaranteed that uh, we really fix the original problem. So uh, most important is to, uh, to ensure that uh, the original uh, bug doc is uh, also resolved. And uh, probably that's all at, on this level. Mostly, uh, I will not uh, talk about the secret step number two. It is a very specific uh, step to the three and it's obvious. But uh, step one about uh, minimizing and reducing test case, it is um, of most interest in this area. Uh, as far as I see, uh, nobody invented any better uh, approach than uh, do this, uh, this algorithm. So uh, at first, uh, on every step, we are just making the file backup, current file backup. Why this is important? Because if we ruin documents somehow or bug is no longer reproducible, we can easily fall back to just previous phase. Pretty obvious. Then just uh, removing what uh, looks like uh, this is uh, not uh, used in this bug and uh, probably it is not used. We should verify that the uh, document is still okay in, in Word. Verify that the uh, document is still broken in writer. If everything is okay, repeat this uh, cycle. So pretty obvious. 
But uh, if we are going to, to details, uh, my personal opinion that the reducing of a document should happen uh, on XML level. So not edit the document directly or in writer or in Word. Reason of this is uh, because especially for interoperability, not for ordinal bugs, but for interoperability bugs, is that uh, there is a huge chance that after saving the document in writer, or uh, saying this uh, once again with in Word, uh, that uh, bug will disappear, it uh, will be no longer reproducible. For Word, it, is, uh, it depends. And for Writer, it is uh, mostly uh, true, because uh, of course, uh, it, if it is interoperable bug, uh, it uh, will be most likely inside import filter. And if a document is imported incorrectly and then saved back, well, we will find nothing. And a uh, serious problem here, it is uh, that we need uh, to edit the uh, XML files, which are um, not expected to be uh, user-readable, basically, uh, in this case, which are located inside zip archive, which is actually our document package. This is a relatively easy task for users who are skilled with Vim or Emacs, because of the uh, possibility to do the things directly in archive. Uh, and uh, we can format XML uh, pretty good, but I'm not uh, that person. And um, uh, as you've seen, I use mostly Windows and forced to use Windows. And uh, these uh, programs are here not so convenient in this case. And so I should uh, invent uh, my own ways uh, how to do these things. Well, uh, one of the most important phase, we need to somehow to format this document. LibreOffice uh, has nice feature to enable pretty printing for XML, but unfortunately, uh, it, it can be enabled in expert configuration. But uh, unfortunately, it uh, works only for ODT and ODF formats, and uh, only it works on uh, saving the document. So not our case. One of the easiest uh, things it is uh, just usage uh, XML lint uh, tool from XML, LibXML tool package, or even when I was too lazy, just uh, Google some online XML formatters where there are no such file sites, copy paste something and put back in document. Actually, this way is working, but not very convenient. So practically just uh, I invented a, a stupid a primitive script on shell. Uh, it is just uh, doing the uh, simple magic. Uh, unpack uh, all the package uh, inside a temporary folder, run XML lint uh, with a format uh, for uh, any XML files, and uh, pack everything back and replace the file. Uh, it works uh, OK on Cygwin. Mm. Did not uh, check it uh, on native Linux, but uh, where it is uh, most likely not so uh, important. Free to use if uh, somebody requires it. And when, uh, moment, moment, moment. That's practically all what I uh, can mention about uh, this pretty printing. And here is a missing slide uh, for me about actually uh, reducing the document. Uh, practically, on some level, it, it as I said, uh, much more easier to do these things. But uh, as for me, uh, at first, I uh, try to avoid and remove all the images and all the media data uh, because it is uh, decreases uh, file size greatly, uh, improves uh, the load speed of document uh, also greatly. And the uh, important topic here, it is not to forget to remove the references in inside relations file. Uh, because otherwise, the uh, word is quite strict about uh, this. If uh, there is a reference to file, the file doesn't exist in the package, word will fail and uh, unable to open such files. And then, step by step, we try to remove headers and footers, probably style sheet. Uh, no actual miracle, just uh, step by step by that algorithm I talked before. So, um, as I said, uh, no magical uh, bullet, uh, no sleeve bullet here uh, invented. Uh, just uh, as far as I know, almost everybody uh, is doing it about the same way. And uh, right now, wanted to uh, remind about several interesting cases uh, and uh, 
interoperability bugs uh, with uh, resolved and fixed. And just before going here, um, some introductory info about how the list are represented in different documents. Inside ODT document, uh, lists are pretty simple. Um, so any list uh, has a reference and the uh, actual representation of a list in style, inside style sheet. Uh, it is uh, very is defined information about uh, how list levels are represented, how, how they are formatted, what the bullet or the symbol sales, and so on. Pretty nice and simple uh, idea, and it works. What's about uh, DocX? Well, situation is much more uh, harder. We have uh, for uh, each uh, numbered paragraph, uh, we have a marking corresponding number, a number and ID, which uh, refers to the list of the right table. And uh, in the site, this list of the right table, uh, there are actual uh, references to real list uh, table. And of course, uh, like in ODT, this list ID can also contain uh, list inside list table. There are also possible references to styles. What's most interesting here is uh, displayed in this uh, diagram that the uh, two different lists are referring actually uh, one the same list uh, definition. And the site list of the right table, it is uh, some special uh, properties which are defined. Well, this list is number two, but uh, let's, uh, we are using list number one, but let's uh, use exactly the same list, but start from, for example, from one, or for that level, we are starting from another value. So we did a really overriding list. Uh, this uh, approach looks uh, nowadays uh, very strange, but uh, at least for me, but it came from the dark ages when 640 kilobytes of memory were sufficient for all. And uh, in that time, uh, such an uh, idea to store list uh, was uh, quite uh, helpful because of uh, we greatly reduced uh, disk usage and uh, memory consumption. Um, it is a classical story that in document uh, we most likely have almost identical list, but there uh, can be many of them. And in that time, this approach was uh, pretty good. We use less uh, disk space and memory. Nowadays, well, only for historical reasons, from my opinion. And uh, such uh, architecture is uh, really have a reason of uh, many problems and uh, misunderstanding, mi misimplementation, and so on and so on. And uh, for list, it is uh, one of the important uh, topics. And uh, let's look how it's in practical, in practice. One of the topics I was uh, fighting times ago, it is uh, this uh, interesting right to left uh, ordered list. Uh, because the uh, text is uh, RTL, I also put the screenshots uh, to, uh, from, left, from right to left. To the right, it is a uh, word what is expected to be, to left, uh, right. We don't care in this case about uh, different paddings. Uh, only um, one small issue for different uh, headings uh, we see here that the writer put dots here and expected to be dash symbols. Sounds easy, but actually it is not. Uh, investigation shows that inside the uh, docx format we have a list format strings. So for each level, we define uh, such a string where uh, this uh, percentage signs are substituted by corresponding uh, numbers or any characters. So uh, in that document I was uh, showing here, this uh, format string was looking like this. In complex case, theoretically, what support uh, some crazy things like uh, I mean, whatsoever. What we have in writer, well, um, writer supports the uh, prefix, what is going before uh, the numbering, suffix, what is after, and hard-coded inside the code, uh, dot symbol as a separator. That's all. So all this uh, require, uh, require to be redesigned. 
So nowadays, uh, LibreOffice uh, internally is using this, the same form of string as uh, with the same idea as in, inside the world. All of our are converted uh, to this format. And the suffix and prefix are used only as a fallback cases for, this, uh, for DT. This feature is not uh, extracted in, into UI, but as far as I've seen, somebody was trying to do this. Uh, there is a not working separator uh, field, but it doesn't work as expected as for me. Mm, for me, it uh, looks like uh, it is a good topic to include inside ODF standard because the such form of string is uh, much more flexible than the prefix or and suffix. And initial problem of this uh, bug doc was some Arabic, I suppose, text. And, uh, uh, and the uh, delimiters were absolutely different, not minuses like here and the dashes, but uh, some specific Arab, uh, Arab um, digit, or I don't know. I'm not the expert in that area. Another mm, simple case, uh, looks like a simple, uh, uh, but it uh, pains me, uh, drinks me a lot of blood. We uh, do uh, see some unexpected uh, format uh, level numbers in different places. Again, looks relatively easy, but uh, it turns out that after uh, debugging, that the what that the table that I shown you initially about uh, that list table list of write table is not the only feature how the lists uh, can uh, interact with each other. There are also special uh, style link uh, to a token which can refer uh, from one list uh, to another. And uh, this also adds uh, additional complexity to how the lists are behaving and how they. Uh, and uh, we can combine it into another reason of uh, terrible regressions and interoperability bugs. So what's in practice? Uh, when I was fighting with this list, uh, I made around uh, 16 commits, uh, but I didn't count them exactly, just uh, lazy with mention of list in my latest comments. Unfortunately, many of them are regressions I introduced by myself during previous list fixes. From one point of view, it is looking like uh, moving one step forward, two step back, but I'm not quite sure that this is the case because uh, right now all these cases are covered with uh, test cases, uh, they are tested. And uh, from my point of view, it is anyway uh, progress. And I want to uh, especially thank uh, Xisco for his patient uh, and uh, finding all the regressions and uh, kind of assistance here. So, Xisco, my thanks. And, and uh, that's in brief uh, what I wanted to talk. Uh, Michael, your turn. Oh, okay, thanks. Um, so, uh, another, oh. The slides went away. Did you turn off the screen sharing? Uh, no. Oh, no, no, they are back. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. Um, so uh, one um, peculiarity of a words document model is that um, um, the uh, paragraph mark is an actual character in Word. And uh, so you can apply formatting to that character and um, Word will paint this formatting then uh, on the paragraph mark if you, oh, I'm sorry. I have an issue here because the shared screen does always goes away. Um, I will look at the other screen. Okay, um, sorry. Um, right, uh, so Word paints this um, paragraph mark uh, this formatting on the paragraph mark, which you can see if, if you turn on the uh, formatting marks in the toolbar. And it uh, also paints uh, the formatting on the uh, list label if the paragraph is in a list. 
And uh, in Writer, the situation is different because there is no paragraph mark. There are only paragraphs and paragraphs are objects basically. Um, yeah, so this uh, presents an uh, obvious inter problem. And um, what we found is that th the um, import of this paragraph mark formatting was then uh, implemented in the docx filter uh, via creating a, a text attribute at the end of the paragraph that uh, is uh, has no extent, it's zero length. And um, this uh, could then be uh, painted uh, as a list label, and it could also be uh, recognized in the docx export filter and uh, exported to docx again. And um, yeah, this was uh, a bit of a hack, and it can only handle simple and uh, most basic cases. Um, and for example, if the characters at the end of the paragraph happen to have the same formatting as the paragraph mark, then a writer uh, would merge the uh, empty attribute uh, into the previous attribute and the uh, export filter wouldn't find it anymore, so it was lost. Um, yeah, and uh, it could also happen that uh, if the user edits the uh, document that the um, empty uh, text attribute would then no longer be at the end of the paragraph and it would also be lost. So uh, next slide, please. Um, then uh, what have we done to improve this situation? Um, well, since um, we don't have a paragraph mark in Brighter, we have added a paragraph uh, formatting item that is now a property of the paragraph object. And we called it list auto format because uh, we think the, uh, the more important aspect of this is that it applies to the list label. And, um, we, uh, we can uh, paint this now as the uh, list label. Um, the list label can already ha uh, have a, a character style applied from the uh, list formatting itself. And uh, that would then override the, uh, the uh, list auto, auto format because that's the way it, way it works in uh, Word basically. Um, and we can also uh, import and export this um, paragraph mark formatting in the docx filters. And um, then um, this works with um, hard formatting attributes already in uh, LibreOffice version 6.4.0. And it turns out that you can uh, also apply a character style to the paragraph mark. And this uh, is working since version 6.4.7. Um, but uh, this is not uh, entirely complete yet. Uh, basically, at that point, we had solved the, uh, the, the problem that our customer had. And um, there are some obvious follow-up uh, issues there, like uh, RTF uh, filters. And um, it would be useful to be able to export this uh, paragraph item to as an uh, ODF extension. Uh, there's also no user interface to uh, be able to edit it. And uh, we can currently not paint it as the paragraph marker um, yet, only as the list label. So uh, next slide, please. Um, so here's an example, and uh, on the left you can see um, the uh, reference document in Word, and the uh, first half of the examples have a character style applied, um, and the second half have uh, both a character style and uh, then hard formatting on top of that. And uh, on the top right, you can see what it looked like in uh, Writer version um, 6.3. Um, and so um, the list labels, most of them uh, were not um, shown correctly, um, uh, but a few a few things did work. And uh, then in the lower right, you see uh, the uh, current status where uh, all of the list labels look the same as they do in Word. Um, but you can see that the uh, paragraph uh, end marker 
um, is uh, looks the same as previously, so there were no, was no improvement there yet. Um, okay, so that's uh, all I have for this. And uh, we should uh, like to thank um, our customer, uh, LHM, the city of Munich, for uh, sponsoring uh, these improvements. Okay, now uh, back to you, Vasily. Uh, practically, this is all about we should uh, wanted to talk about. Um, Wherever does uh, and if uh, interoperability fixes are quite boring and um, I think uh, not worth uh, any mentioning. Just ordinal work, nothing to share. These were just the uh, most interesting cases uh, from our point of view. Thank you for watching.